Okay. Many novels are written about whodunit, mystery novels. And we're looking at a great mystery now in today's subject of the Bible. Who done it? Second Samuel chapter twenty four verse one. And we're going to look at the subject here now. We don't know who done it. I don't know when we get off the glory we'll find out who done it. Some preachers say we will find out all the answers when we get to glory. But let's stay with what we have. In 2 Samuel 24, 1, And again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. God is angry with the inhabitants of Judah. And upon the king of Judah, God moved, caused David to number Israel. We're not going into the census. We're going to get with the, with the facts that we have at hand with the study. God is angry with Israel. Upon the, the king of Israel, David, God moved David to number Israel. Sin. Second Chronicles 21.1 Some of you know what we're looking at. Some of you may not have an idea and you'll grow. You'll say, wow, I never saw that. Amen. Glory to God. Some of it's a refresher. And 1st Chronicles. I'm in 2nd Chronicles. 1st Chronicles. That was really out of context. 1st <laughs> Chronicles 21.1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan stood up, got up against Israel, and he provoked David to number Israel. Second Samuel 24 1 says that God was angry with Israel. And he moved David to number Israel. First Chronicle 21 says Satan stood up against Israel and he provoked David to number Israel. And 1 Samuel 24 and 1 Chronicle 21 are the same story. This is where David purchases uh, the land, Jerusalem, for the temple. The title deed that's in the Bible of that, of that land right now, where they're done with a rock is. But we're not looking at that. So one place says God. And another place says the devil. So surely we have a contradiction in the Bible. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. And we're going to pick up Job chapter 1 verse 6. Job 1.6 Let's go behind the scenes of what man has not seen that the Holy Spirit has inspired to tell us through the book of Job through 2 Samuel 1 Chronicles something that we've not seen Now there was a day for uh, Job chapter 1 verse 6 when the sons of God angels we're not going to get that study but the angels came to present themselves before the Lord Job of God and Satan came also among them. Did you know up to Revelation 12, you're going to see Satan in heaven? Here he is. Job is the first book written in the Bible. This is about the, the time of, of the right in the, uh, of the time of the life of Job, the grandson of Esau. And the Lord said unto Satan, Did you know God talks to Satan? Whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Okay, we were talking about David. Now let's look at Job. That there was none like him in all the earth, 
a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. That's a great report God has for Job. I hope I hear it well done. Then Satan answered the Lord. Did you know Satan talks to God? Does Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him? Have you not protected him? And about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand. And his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand, God's hand. Put your fourth hand, God, now and touch all that he has. And he will curse thee to thy faith. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. All uh, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Satan says, Oh, yeah? You're protecting him. God says, do whatever you want, but do not touch Job himself. Okay? So verse 13, his, his children are having a, a, a time together. Verse 14, uh, verse 14 and 15, here comes the Sabians. They steal and rob. Death. 16 and 17, the fire uh, comes down. From heaven. And if you study the Antichrist, he's going to have fire come down from heaven. Revelation. And then 17 and 18, there's another carrying away of livestock in human life. And then verse 19 and 20, Job's children are killed by a weather phenomenon, uh, a great wind. And verse 20, Job says, Naked I came forth my mother's womb, naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Okay, who did it? Well, the devil did it. God said, Okay, go after Job's procession. Leave Job alone. Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Boom, 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 boom. But it's recorded that God gave Satan permission. And God set bounds for Satan. Chapter 2 of Job. Verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came among the present himself before the Lord. Chapter 1. The Lord said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Chapter 1. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Chapter 1. And still he... Hold his fast his integrity, although thou, Satan, moveth me against him to destroy him without cause. We got a problem. Chapter 1, everything God told Satan, go do it, just leave Job alone. Satan went out and had a field day. And God says, you moved me. And God says, moveth me against him. And destroy him without cause. God took personally the actions of the devil because God allowed the devil to do it. More. Verse 4 Satan answered the Lord and says, Skin for skin. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand, again, chapter 1, now and touch his bone. And touch his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. The Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand. But save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord. Satan gets the permission. He gets the, the charge. He gets the restrictions. Satan's gone. 
and smote Job with sore boils on the sole of his foot and unto his unto his crown. Okay. The devil did it. Yeah, the devil did, but God gave him permission. And what we learn in Job chapter 2, verse 3, when God gives the devil permission with restrictions, God says, you did it, I did it. God caused David to number Israel. Satan caused David to number Israel. And we're looking at who done it a very, very fine line. And we ought not to charge God or charge the devil too quickly. And I've been in I've been in a church where the past, it's the devil, oh smutty face. You gotta be careful. Because if it is the devil doing it, according to Job 1 and 2, God has allowed him with restrictions. Now let's look at 2 Samuel 24. Back to 2 Samuel 24. Second Samuel 24, verse number 12. Well, we'll look at verse 1 again. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved, God moved David to number Israel. Okay? Verse 12. Satan made me do it. Second Samuel 24, 12. Go and say to David, Thus saith the Lord, I, God, offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So Gad, the prophet of David, came to David and told him, and said to him, Shall seven years famine come upon thee in, the, in thy land? Will thou flee three months before thy enemies? While they pursue thee, or that there be three days pestilence in the light in thy land. Now advise and see what answer I shall return to him, God that sent me. David said to Gad, I am a great strait. Let me let us fall now in the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall in the hand of man. And the Lord sent the Lord sent the pestilence upon Israel. The Lord sent the presence upon Israel. In verse 16, when the angel stretched forth his hand. In verse 16, the angel of the Lord. God sent forth the, the, the pestilence. God was angry with Israel. God chose a sin for David to do that he can... Uh, Chastise his people, Judah. God did it. There it is. First Chronicles twenty one. First Chronicles twenty one. Look at verse one again. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now look at verse nine, same chapter. The Lord spake unto Gad, David here, saying, Go and tell David, say, Thus saith Lord, I offer thee three things. Verse 12, the angel of the Lord. Okay, now, we've got two accounts. God did it, the devil did it, and God's doing the destroying, God's doing the, the judgment. As I said before, who done it? Okay, tell me. In Second Samuel twenty-four and First Chronicles, who's doing it? Well, evidently with Scripture, God's doing it. <coughs> Both God and the devil provoked David. Who did it in the case of Job? The devil did it, but God allowed it, and God said. I take responsibility. First Kings twenty two. First Kings twenty two. 
First King 22-22. And the Lord said unto him, this is the lying spirit, wherefore, excuse me, wherewith, and he, the lying spirit, said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also, go forth and do so. God is in heaven, as we saw in Job chapter 1. And the king of Israel has done evil. In the sight of God. It is not right with God. And God's sitting up in heaven and said, Hey, I need someone to persuade Ahab, chapter uh, verse 20. I want Ahab to fall. I want judgment upon Ahab. And there's a little commotion going on in heaven. And up comes this spirit. Stands before God. He says, I'm a lying spirit. John 8, 44, the devil. Lord God, if you send me, I will go lie in the prophets of Ahab to destroy him. And God says, go ahead. I send you to go be a liar. And I send you to the pulpit of men so you can lie to the king. God says, I send you. Do you realize today, in 2019, that there are liars in the pulpit? And they could be sent by God? It is a remarkable thing. That God could send a lying prophet, 1 Kings 22. And that lying prophet is the devil or devils of the devil. That if you have been deceived by God, deceived by a religion that lies to you, and pick one A, B, C, D, all the way through Z, it may be the fact is that God has sent that lying religion to you because that's what you want. That's what Ahab wanted. He didn't want to hear from God. He didn't want to know about God. He wanted to be tickled with the ear. Now, on the other resource, we have. Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians 11. Let's get a further revelation. Who did it? Who done it? 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles. Liar. Deceive, deceitful workers. Liar. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They're not. And no marvel for Satan. There he is again. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Be careful of seeing light. I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel. I had a near-death experience and I've seen the light. Maybe the devil, but that's not what we're looking at. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Now look at his ministers. Who is the his? Run the reference back to verse 14. Satan. God can send a lying prophet, a lying spirit into prophets to lie. Satan also has lying preachers. And denominational heads and religious hierarchies, may I say. So, if there is a religion out there that are lying to the people, who sent them? God? Possibility. Who sent them? The devil? Possibility. Who? Where's that fine line? Do you realize the worst thing that God can do, and I, I say that tongue in cheek, is he can give you exactly what you want, and what you want may not be good for you. And the people at the judgment will say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Lord, didn't I belong to this church? Lord, wasn't I baptized? Lord, didn't I? 
Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You were deceived. Because that's the bargain shopping you wanted from God. And if you don't want the truth, and Ahab does, did not want the truth, God will give you the untruth that you want. And as the case of Job, the devil said, I want to get him, I want to get him, I want to get him. And God said, okay, go get him, restrictions. And God says, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. He says, devil, step up. Yeah, I want to use you to get him. <laughs> Let me have him. And when God attacked his people, Judah, in the time of Jeremiah, God said to Babylon, yeah, I want you to go get him. I want you to completely destroy Judah in the temple. Yes, sir, do it. So God uses nations and people to judge and pass on evil for our sins. In the realm of who done it? What's going on? Luke 13. The Gospel of Luke chapter 13. And I'm not going to hit all of these. The 1316. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, Jewish, whom Satan has bound? Who did it? In that case, the devil. By the words of Jesus Christ himself. So the devil can do it. According to Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12 7. 2 Corinthians 12 7. Second Corinthians twelve seven. And least I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations that was given to Paul, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, least I should be exalted from above measure. Paul says God has been so great to me, Job. Satan came and gave me a thorn in the flesh. No, he did not. Read it. A messenger of Satan. Satan said, come here guy, go get Paul. Isn't that interesting? If you were to study the book of Job, you realize I think those three friends of Job were messengers of Satan. His wife was a messenger of Satan. Curse God and die. Those prophets of Ahab were messengers of Satan. Now here is somebody sent by Satan, by the works of Satan, but do you not think in heaven, the scene that we don't see, that the devil is anxious to kill Paul, get Paul, destroy Paul, and God's like, no, but you can go ahead and chastise him. You can give him a little humbling experience, but... You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, but you can't do this. Job 1 and 2. And Satan has sent out a messenger. Genesis 3.16. Genesis 3.16. Genesis 3.16. Going back to where sin originate, originated. 3.16 Unto the woman he said, God said, I, God, will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. That's God doing it. Eve, the consequences, the, the evil of your sin, that you disobeyed my word, I am going to give you sorrow, I'm going to give you sorrow, I'm going to give you sorrow, and your husband's ahead of you now. The devil caused it. He, he got Eve interested. But God said, I did it. And who gives life? The devil or God? 
God does. And when you're in agony of pain and giving birth to a child, you better not blame your husband. It's not his fault. And if you do, you need to repent of your sin. Because God said, I caused that sorrow and pain. And if you don't want your husband ahead of you, you better repent because God says, I put him ahead of you. There are actions in the Bible that God says, it's me. There are actions in the Bible that the devil says, it's me. There's actions in the Bible that God says, the devil did it. There are actions of prophets in the Bible that said the devil sent someone to do it. There are things in the Bible that the Bible says that God allowed it. And with restrictions. Exodus 32. Exodus 32. Exodus 32. And there's tons of examples of this. Exodus 32, 35. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Who did it? God. Judgment. Chastisement. You went against what God told you to do. God will get you. Now there's a realm here. When it comes to who done it between God and the devil, God may have done it. God may have allowed the devil to do it. And the question comes to who did it? Who knows? <coughs> Excuse me. As far as I studied the book of Job, I have not read, and I could be wrong, but I have not read where Job ever found out what happened. I don't know if the book of Job was written in the life of Job that he could open it up and say, Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe not. Now there's another possibility. And, oh God, why did you allow this to happen in my life? Oh, the devil made me do it. How about man himself? How about us? How about our sins causing consequences that we did and not God or the devil? How about in America when we have alcohol and there's a warning on the alcohol and doctors warn us about alcohol and our liver and our body and our family and the destruction that alcohol brings and you want to be a fool and go out and get drunk and drive an automobile and wreck another, another person's family for life and you're going to say the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. You were the fool. Oh, if I'm saved, you know, God will stop me from doing it. No, he won't. He'll allow you to be a fool. There are things that men do to themselves to cause consequences that neither God or the devil had anything to do with. And when you look at smoking and what the Surgeon General puts on those packs of cigarettes and cigars, that I got cancer. Your fault. No need to blame God or the devil. You were the fool. Men had known about the effects of alcohol and tobacco for many years. You're not back in the time of Sir Walter Raleigh when they had no idea what the stuff did. You know what it does today. You still do it. You've sinned against God. The devil didn't make you do it and God didn't make you do it. You did it all by yourself. How about sex? Sexual pleasures. God puts forth one sexual player to the marriage bed. Adultery, fornication. When you get a VD, that's pretty much not of God or the devil. Now, there could be realms of, you know, go to a doctor's office or go into a uh, private, I mean, a public toilet, something like that. that. Yeah, those things happen. Listen, you want to play with fireworks. And blow your fingers off. Don't blame God you are missing two or three fingers. 
because you got drunk on, on the 4th of July and you blew your fingers off. That's you and your stupidity. And when you go to work and you carelessly avoid the safety rules of your job and you are affected on your job by an accident or injury for life, I mean, the warnings are there. Don't do this, don't do that, caution. Not God or the devil. So in the realm of who done it, we've got God, we've got the devil, and we got ourselves. Now we can tell when it's ourselves. When we've been forewarned. And when a man goes off into hell for all eternity, and he's had someone give him a gospel tract, open the Bible, he's had a religious radio station, he's come across a man preaching on the TV, he hears him preaching on the street, he has somebody who sends him gospel tracts, he sees the manger scene at Christmas, and hears about the resurrection at Easter, and he still keeps going the wrong way outside of carols and hymns. And he goes off to hell. The fool has said in his heart that there's no God. And that not only fits atheism, that fits everybody who's in a religion. Because if you're in a religion, you don't have God. You got no God. So I'm going to tell you of my best opinion. On who does what in our life of God and the devil. And here's my best opinion. I have no idea. I cannot nail it. Who done it? I don't know. And your reaction is, well, I don't know who did it. Your best reaction to whatever comes in your life by God or by the devil, is to ask God through the infirmities, through the troubles, whatever it is, the trials and tribulations, whatever it is, Lord, what can I do to retain your glory that you may use what is happening to me for the honor of Jesus Christ alone? And that you get the praise. How's that? Because it may be God trying to correct you. It may be the devil trying to destroy you. It may be God using the devil as he did with Paul. And then again, man, we bring our own troubles. By not taking heed to warnings. 